Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Grass Fitch Racer. Today's guest is a special one. Now, I'm not going to spoil it too much for you, but he is now currently racing GT cars and he is from New Zealand. So, I want to welcome Matt Gibson to the show. So, Matt, thanks for jumping on the podcast. Let's kick things off, uh, you know, by getting a sense of your motorsport journey. So, how did you start racing at such a, uh, you know, you were young, you were 12 years old, but, you know, uh, it's still quite old in racing terms. So what got you hooked at the start? Yeah, you're totally right. 12 years old to get into the motorsport industry or have a career on it is quite old. A lot of guys start when they're, you know, like six or four or, you know, in carts. Um, it's just, yeah, my old, my old man, my father, he raced. Uh, nothing to the level that I have achieved, which is I'm you know, quite proud of. And as you can imagine, he is, has been my father. Um, yeah, just I just wanted to race and... Basically, when I don't know, mum and dad just bought me a go kart when I was twelve, and we went from there. So I started on carts, and then had a had a, had a year off just due to some family stuff, and then yeah, basically progressed carts and through the ranks, Formula V, Formula Ford, Suzuki Swifts, and yeah, raced a couple of things, and now into GT cars. So yeah, very uh, extensive career and lots of fun along the way. Yeah. So um, you did mention you started in go karting. How did you find that starting at 12 years old? Because I remember I, st I started at eight, so just before you sort of were allowed to start racing full time, um, you know, and I raced in a class called Cadet 9 where, you know, everyone else was sort of getting started. But when you're at 12 years old, people have already been doing it for a few years. So did you find yourself taking a few years to catch up to the others or were you pretty quick straight out the gate? No, you're very, very right. Yep, I agree there. Um, I did have to take a little bit longer to kind of, uh, sorry, should I say, I did take longer to adjust. You know, a lot of these guys were quite fast. Um, and look, majority of people can kind of get their speed and become quite fast quite quickly with that time and the dedication to the sport or to, you know, to the practice and testing. But it's that racecraft and what you do on the racetrack is where it took time. Um, and carts, you know, I had some success, I would say more at club level, you know, like I didn't really adjust, so I didn't really click with a go-kart, I'd say that well, but to be fair also, I don't think we understood, you know, we started as a family-based team, just me and my dad, like most people, I don't think we really realised what it took to become successful, um, and that was preparation, that was the gear we used, that was everything, I just don't think we, we knew or, or had the tools, you know, the, should I say, the, um, you know, the tools to, to know what to do. So yeah, we went out at club level and then as soon as we got into cars, that's when we found teams and that's when we really started to show that I had some speed and, and could have some success in the world of motorsport. Yeah, because sometimes, you know, you can find yourself, you're a very good driver, um, but when you're running under your own spanner, sometimes you can feel like you haven't got the equipment underneath you. So being in a team environment, they, they obviously got the experience. So with your skill rocking up and going out there and giving it a crack, it's gonna, you know, show your potential. You moved from karting to Formula V. That's where I'm currently at. I went, did karting, did two years of super karting. Now I'm in Formula V. What, what sort of things did you gather from Formula V? Because it's a great category in my opinion, but I'm always interested to know what other people think of it. No, I totally agree with you, man. Um, Formula V or Formula First, as it's known over here in New oh, Zealand. Yeah, yeah as a, I think it's a great category. You know, the speed is it's quite slow and it's quite a, a lot of people we, we laugh about it you know the gear changes are kind of high pitch and then to nothing um being that meet up motor but i learned a, a lot i learned so much in formula v about racecraft that's basically the biggest thing racecraft like changing gears turning steering wheel brake pedals and stuff you can learn that anywhere but what i learned is racecraft and we've seen some of the best drivers produced out of um new zealand come through formula v or formula first you know shane mag is is one of them Richie Stanaway, you know, both those guys are highly successful race car drivers. Brendan Hartley, Liam Lawson, all those guys have progressed through Formula V, Formula First here in New Zealand. So that just goes to show that it is a great category. And if uh, that's where you are right now, yeah, good on you, mate. You should stay there for, they, I did two seasons. Um, I believe if you want to, and you've got that drive and you, you think you can make a career out of it, I think one season, and you've got a backer, I think one season's enough. But I did two seasons, um, which is all, all good. And then, yeah, move through the ranks to the more publicized and um, show, yeah, publicized categories is what, I, what I'd say, yeah. Yeah, I'm currently just finished up my second season. Um, 
to be honest, I've not had the first two years that I was planning on having. I was only planning on doing two years, um, but I will be staying for a third year. Um, just one more year, give it a crack because I run under my own, I, I span of the car myself. So I've had a few issues and uh, yeah, next year we're looking, we're going to look like we're going to give it a red hot crack for the championship and uh, then we'll see where we can move on to. Yeah, good on you, man. And the same as us, our first season, we, we had a few issues. We showed, showed potential, we're fast, won a few races, and then yeah, we had car problems. So we're like, let's have another crack. And that's what we did. So yeah, good on you, mate. You're making the right decision. Thank you. Yeah. I know you had a lot to do with Hampton Downs, but um, I noticed the Formula First at Auckland, it would be very good for racecraft uh, because of the long straights. Uh, well, in Formula V, there'd be long straights, but... Um, you know, how did you sort of, or was even had to dance a bit of a long track? Um, to, to be honest with you, I'm showing my age here, I'm not even that old, but Hampton Downs was not around when I first started in Formula V. So I've never raced a Formula V around Hampton Downs Motorsport Park, but Pukekohe, that was definitely a circuit I raced on, and it was a circuit that it didn't have the, what's called Turn 5 and 6, which is the kink down the back straight for the supercars to pass. So that wasn't around when I was racing Formula V. So drafting and or slipstreaming, as some people call it, was definitely imperative and you needed to learn how to do that. And if you didn't, then see it, you got passed by many cars. So, and I guess that comes down to that race craft, man. You know, like, you know, you, you always think you want to get out front and win, but in a Formula V, if you're, uh, if you're in first on the last lap, especially at Popakoe, it doesn't mean you're going to win. You know, you can get drafted and you can drop straight. You, you probably know for yourself, you can drop straight back down to fifth even, you know? Yeah, if um, you're at Phillip Island on the last lap coming out of um, MG, you want to be sitting third right behind second and first. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I can but, imagine definitely there, yeah. But if the guy in first is smart at Phillip Island, sometimes depending what the gap he is, he's got, because sometimes if they're right under you, you've got a better chance because they don't have the big wind up. Um, yep. So in some scenarios, it's better to be first, but I don't think so with that long straight coming onto the main state at uh, Pukekohe, there'd be no chance. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Sometimes you can kind of, I remember you could dive bomb at the inside of that last hairpin and then you can kind of block all your way down um, and they'll usually pull out side by side and you can normally hold your line till the end. But yeah, if you're across the checkered, so if you, if you cross the checkered with the last lap to go and you're on first, Nah, that back straight, you're gone. <laughs> That's fair enough. And um, yeah, so with the Formula First, you moved on from there. Um, I'll be honest, mate, I forgot what you said you went to next. Yeah, that's all good, man. No, no stress. So I was fortunate enough to win the Suzuki Swift Scholarship. Um, so that's when the Suzuki Swift had a Suzuki Swift Sport Cup is what it was called over here. Uh, so I was lucky to win the scholarship. So I got a, um, I wouldn't say a free drive, but I got a, highly um what do you call it paid for drive a lot of it and then i also ran for my ford for a couple of rounds which is pretty cool so uh six was awesome they were really cool and one of the, my most memorable experiences was definitely racing at the hamilton street race as a support category to the supercar so that was really cool i know it is only in a suzuki swift considering what i'm racing now but man racing on a street circuit and a little in a cup car that was something special a swift yeah. cup car, not a Porsche. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, yeah, the the Suzuki's like it doesn't really matter what you're doing if you're following the supercars. That's still pretty good. It's good exposure as well. Um, if they let you on the coverage or not. But um, yeah, Hamilton, you wouldn't you wouldn't have raced around there much, would you? Because it's a straight circuit. Yeah, I ran. Uh, we ran. Well, I think once. Yeah, we did. Uh, we ran once around the Hamilton Street Circuit. Obviously, I've been there a few times, but we ran the the Suzuki Swift Cup car around there um once yeah that was cool we only went there once with suzuki's and yeah we ran it once and that was an yeah, awesome experience man how'd you find yourself learning the track on the Pretty friday quick. or the thursday yeah it was a thursday i think thursday at like 8 30 a.m or 8 a.m it was, it was out the gate first thing in the morning yeah pretty quickly i think i did pretty well and i was for some weird reason i was literally like third all weekend just third third, third. i couldn't I got onto the lead and then dropped the third year. Third, third, third a weekend and I'll do podium and third, so, yeah. Would have been good for the series points? Uh, well, it was actually a trophy round, so oh. the series had finished beforehand and we're kind of, the category decided, yep, let's just jump in and do, do a trophy round. And um, Yeah, like Angus Fogg, you know, I'm sure we've most people know Angus Fogg, he jumped in as well, so he won the weekend. Uh, Earl Bamber's brother, William Bamber, he was second and then I was third. 
So um, those cars are fast. Those two, those teammates, Angus and William, they're, they're fast. <laughs> did you um did you ever race against Chris Vanderdrift or? No, I know I know Chris quite well, but I've never yeah. actually raced against him. He's a little bit older than me, so I think he's I think he's pushing forty. If he's listening, I hope I got it right or <laughs> wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, because I, I know he he's very well known in um endurance sort of racing or even Porsche racing. He's very well known, um you know so. It's one of the things like New Zealand actually you guys produce a lot of good drivers and um, I sometimes feel like these days there's a lot more the progression through New Zealand is a lot easier or not easier but it's a lot more simple there's sort of one way to go uh, where here you've got a million options in Australia yeah you, you are I guess you are right uh, yeah. one thing I will say about New Zealand is that you can get a really good head start here you can um, learn a lot and it's you know we're a big motorsport community probably similar to australia but in order to i believe and a lot of people have discussed this as well in order to succeed in the world of motorsport you need to kind of learn what you know here and then get overseas as soon as you can otherwise you're just going to be here forever you know you can win a national championship and then it's like cool what's next you know you need you need to get overseas and that's what you know the likes of richie and brendan and, and um Hartley and um, Lawson have done, you know, they're done at the right time. Yeah. Um, what do you think about the Formula Regional Championship though? That's sort of, that's a bit newish to New Zealand and I feel like it's sort of a really good opportunity to get the, your guys over there prepared to jump. If they were to go over to Europe or even Australia to race Formula Open, it gives them a good understanding of what the car's like before they uh, jump over. Yeah, I think it's a really cool opportunity to have that here based in New Zealand. Um, I was fortunate fortunate to work with the Super Sprint Championship last year and obviously see firsthand how this, the championship worked and actually help, I would say on the background, help with the championship a little bit in the operational side. But yeah, I think it's great and it's so, so cool to have those international drivers come over here to New Zealand to, I would say, come over here as an unknown driver. You know, maybe, maybe a little bit known or this guy's, you know, good, but um and then you know a few years down the track it's like well now they're in formula one so that is very cool and i think it, yeah it's a great opportunity for drivers especially from europe to come over here and there i think it's their winter which is our summer so yeah you know it's exciting yeah definitely and um i spoke i spoke to uh i think we were talking about blake do you remember blake yes yes I yeah. Do. Yep. yeah yeah so I, I actually raced against him when he was over here in um australia a few times in go-karting um, he's oh, cool. a very quick kid and he, he definitely came through the ranks the sort of the same way. So he went through Formula First, then did Formula Ford. Um, and I believe he did the regional, the Formula Regional as well. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty I think sure he did he, that I too. Think, I think he may be doing it this season potentially. Um, I'm pretty sure he did the six, he, he was in a TCR, the six hour at, at Highlands, I believe. I think we're thinking about the right guy. Yeah. yeah. So no, he, he's he's a good kid, man. He's a good kid. When yeah. we did the run, when we did the run for the six hour, I was I got designated runner, um, and he was behind me, so we, we had a good good chat. Yeah. If that's the right guy we're talking about, yeah, he's, he's a good kid. So is that sort of the the way you would you think everyone should come through motorsport in New Zealand? Because over here we've sort of got you do go karting. Uh, you could choose between Formula V and Ford. Not many people go Formula V anymore, but Lots of people go Formula Ford and then they move up to 86 or Aussie racing cars and head up that way. What do you think is the best path, path in New Zealand these days to get to the top level? Um, hey, look, look, karting is great, but not everyone's gone karting. Mm. Um, but look, if, if I was saying, look, you, you're a kid and you're starting out, I, you know, say you're five or six, yep, jump in karts, probably get into Formula. I would just say, I would recommend Formula V just because I've done it and I think it's a great category. And, you know, while well, it's produced Shane Megasberg and it's produced Hartley, you know, Lawson, like it's got to be have something going for it. Um, but I believe you want to get in there, you know, even cut him heads, you know. Uh, he went he went Sangyong racing, but um, I believe hop into a Formula V at 13, 14 if you can, and then Formula Ford, 15, 16, and then hopefully Formula Regional, 16, 17 years old, you know, that type of age category. and then from there it's really up to you you know if you wanted to you go formula forward if you want to go tin top then you can go into something else but if you want to go single seater yeah go for me regional definitely it's the, the premium category of single seater racing in, a, in, our, in our country new zealand and obviously uh when you're coming through the ranks you want to try and race um 
you want to get a bit of tin top, you want to get a bit of open wheeler, but did you always have your mind set on a tin top or did you want to go down the path of an open wheeler? Yeah, good question, man. Um, no, I always had my mind set on a tin top. I, I guess that came from my, my love and passion for British touring cars and world touring cars. That's what I, you know, the old Volvo, like the old Super, yeah. tourist, super Tourist, like that was, that was what I was used to watch, you know, I used to, this is again, kind of, I'm not that old, but showing my age, you know, I used to, as a kid, go and, I used to have a 1996, actually 1996 British, no, um, Australian Touring Car Championship on video, on VHS, you probably don't know what videos are. Yeah, I do. <laughs> Oh, you do? Yeah. So, yeah. and they had like Paul Morris and um, Brad Jones and all that, and, and Cameron, McLean, uh, Cameron uh, McLean, I think his name was. Yeah. Um, in that category, yeah, I used to love that, that type of racing. So, that's kind of what got me hooked. And as soon as I could get out of the Formula B, I could, and I jumped into the, the tin top. But one thing I will say I, I did notice about jumping from a single seater to a car is the, the A pillar. So, you know, right, it's right in your vision. Yeah. Which in a single seater, you've got you got full open vision, whereas this, the 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 tin top, I did notice that. So and and of course, when it rains, you don't get wet. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I never really noticed in the in the wet. It's not too bad once you're in a Formula car. I remember go karting, it was pretty horrid. Hmm. Yeah, I um, agree. You just go you just go fast, right? And it just goes straight over your head. Yeah. But I actually got a um a signed photo in the garage of Brad Jones touring car i think it was an audi is that checks yes. out yeah yes i've got i've got yeah. a, got a signed photo in the garage somewhere oh awesome yeah it was a silver uh, and yeah, yeah. Had audi with red the red the red eyes yeah i yeah. do yeah that was, that was some good racing back then yeah i've actually never watched it but um yeah i remember asking dad about it once i saw the poster in the garage and he was telling me all about it because he was really excited oh, when he cool. got it so, oh, awesome! Yeah, yeah, nice. That, that's that's really cool. Yeah, I think I was probably about ten to maybe in the in the early two thousands when I was kind of watching that video. But um, yeah, I was too young at the time when it was out. But yeah, there you go. Bit of history for you. <laughs> and um, when did you sort of, you know, get into GT racing and endurance racing? Because um, they're too, they're really different. But you know, when did you sort of get into it all? Yeah, so I was really fortunate, you know, working at Hampton Downs as track manager and on-site driving instructor, I managed to network a bit and one of the GT members of Hampton Downs by the name of Alan Sargent, we just got quite, you know, palsy and started to talk and he was looking for an another driver and we're, we're similar shape, I'm a little bit taller but we're similar shape and I just, we work really well as a, as a team, I just jump in the car. Uh, without moving the seat, he just we just yeah we sit in the same seating position. I don't mind sitting closer because if he's a little bit shorter, and we work well together. You know, um, so he works out of the team that runs him as race lab. As you can see, I've got the race lab polo on now. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's where it kind of came from, and we started. And initially, it started as me being a bit of a driver coach to him, and he will kind of give me a drive, and I help out and contribute, you know, financially as well. But uh he's actually got really really good in that in the Geneta gd4 he's he's really found us coming in that car and we we're very very similar on our lap times in fact if i step out of the car for a while it takes me a while to catch him back up on times so he's very very accomplished in that car now yeah that's awesome and i i guess um once you when you got a similar build to someone it makes endurance racing a lot easier um because you can switch a lot quicker and everything's in the sort of same position so if you're very similar to someone i guess it all works out yeah i totally i totally agree you know like at the six hour we saw the drivers around us that kind of um had their little seat inserts and you see in supercars too but we're just nah, jumping in it and jumping out it worked, worked well for us well imagine if you're shorter and someone um throws a seat insert in and then it's in the wrong spot for the whole time yeah 100 percent. it's a long time man when you're in the car you know an hour and a half and a and a GT car, some some cars are easier than others, um, but a, an hour and a half can can be, you know, the GT3 car can be quite hard work. How, what's the what's the height difference between you? Do you think? Oh, good question. I'm about five eleven, so I'm about one eighty one. I'd say he'd be about five, he'd be about five eight. I would say, but we're very similar in our in our build, so I think that's where it matters. Yeah, because like I normally just adjust the steering wheel, mm -hmm. and that's pretty easy to do. That that's not. Yeah, that's not crazy. Yeah. But um, yeah, like for an example, I'm actually almost considered too tall for a formula car. 
because anything over six foot is tall, mm. way too tall. Mm -hmm. And I'm only, yeah, I'm only 180 centimeters. Yeah, right. So, yeah, you're just, just under me. Yeah. I was, to be fair, really um, surprised that Shane Van Gisbergen hopping into a former regional car and a TRS car to a couple of years ago here at the New Zealand Grand Prix. I don't know how they, they got him in there, but he got in there and he drove the thing and he bloody won. <laughs> <laughs> how tall is he? He would be, he's got to be, I should know because I saw him yesterday. Uh, he, he should be about six, he's got to be six three, at least. He's he's a he's very tall. If you're on yeah. that no Shane, he, he's a tall dude. Because I know I know at six foot one, that's when the Formula team start to panic and they start moving stuff around, pedal boxes. I, I don't got man. I don't know how he got in that car, but he did, um, and drove the ball off it and won. <laughs> so man's got some talent. He's a freak. Yeah, like I said, I'm I'm not. I know I'm not towering over anyone, but. I, yeah, I just know that I sometimes, I've got my knees bent a little bit under the, well, the formula cars are weird. Your legs are too long, but your arms are too short. That's what I notice. Yeah. The time. Yeah, right. Yeah, well, a bit different here with the formula regional. Um, I've never sat in a the new FD60, but I believe the steering wheel is really, really close to your face. So I know a lot of drivers struggle because it's so, yeah, it's like so close. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Oh, the, the the things I like about tin tops compared to um, well formula cars, you can see a little bit more, I guess. You can yes, I agree. Of, you can see a little bit more how wide your car, or you can see how wide your car is really in a tin top. You can top, see your front but, wheels. <laughs> yeah, you, you can see your front wheels. Sometimes, yeah. if sometimes depending on where you sit, because I was a bit too tall, I could actually see the the you know the beam that runs across the front. I could oh, see yeah, the top yeah, of yeah, that. Yeah. So that's how tall I was sitting, which was a bit. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I, yeah, no, I'm with you, man. When I first drove a Formula Ford, we didn't quite get the seating. I think I just jumped in the last guy, and maybe taking a bit out of the seat, and I, I was really high, and I felt like a bloody, I felt like a giraffe. I look, I saw a photo of myself, and I'm like, oh man, I look like a, <laughs> I look like a spoon. <laughs> um, the next round, we we made a custom seat insert, and I sat right down, and uh, it's really surprising Se um, seating position. Is if you're comfortable, it's it's night and day, you know, like we, we podiumed the, the second time around when I got my seat lower, whereas I, I was just comfortable, you know, I didn't feel like I was falling out of the thing. That, that, that's the other thing. I feel like when you sit lower, you can't really see as much, but you feel more comfortable because yes, you're, that, you're sitting right. at, your, at your height. Because when you're steering right, you know. down below it, I feel it's a bit harder to turn when it's right down, but when it's sort of at here, it's a lot better. I totally agree with you, man. Yeah, yeah I try to sit preference. as low as... Yeah, I try to sit as low as possible when, when I'm instructing. I try to get them to sit as low as possible, but also make sure they're comfortable. You know, a lot of people have this thing about they want to see the bonnet. Um, you kind of just drive by by feel. I'm sure you know what that means. You know, yeah. you kind of just think, yeah, yep, I'm almost there. And that just takes time in the seat too. Yeah, I, I don't understand the questions where people are sort of like, where do you break? Like, mm, I don't really break at the 50 I, or I don't break at the 100. I just sort of have a guess. I, you know, I just know. I just have a feeling that when, yeah, I do. When, yeah, when you're about, to, I do understand. Yeah, because I just know, yeah. like, um, I've got a track car that I take around Winton. Well, it was it was the track car? Now it doesn't work, but I had a focus. Yeah, and I come into Winton. I was braking just after the fifty, but it depend on your tire weight, your fuel, the time of day. So I couldn't really, if someone asked, I couldn't really tell them because. I just sort of go, okay, I've got this much grip compared to the last, like the last corner told me I have this much grip, the car rolled this much, maybe I'll break earlier or maybe I can go later. It was Yeah, always... and look, and that's, yeah, no, I'm with you there, man. And look, I a lot of tracks I do have braking references and braking markers, um, reference points as you call them. But then there is some that don't have a reference point. You just got to go by feel. And especially when you run endurance too, obviously you, you, the more fuel you use, the lighter the car is, the but then you also get a bit of tire dig as well, and obviously a new a new green tire on a qualifying lap, you're going to be breaking and pushing it to the limit. Whereas you know you're now in the race, so that tire dig plus your, your fuel used, um, the car's going to be, react differently. And exactly what you said, man, you just got to go by feel, by the bum of your seat, by the feel for your hands, um, by the feel of the car. You can't break in the same spot all the time. That's why I'm horrible on the simulator. <laughs> you can't feel. I agree. Yeah. yeah well, 
I, I sort of have a, a realistic feel like because I can put the same lap time down every lap because so one of my qualities is I'm not a good qualifier. I'm really bad at qualifying. But in the race, I can put down the exact same lap time within a few tenths or two tenths virtually the whole race. And I can do it on the sim, but I'm just really slow on the sim. Yeah, uh, you, I mean, you sound very similar. I, I've i always been like that my whole motorsport career. I am, I'm an okay qualifier. I, I wouldn't say that I'm the best, and yes, I've put cars on pole before, but it's it's normally not pole, um, yeah. and it doesn't worry me. People go, what, what's up, and I'm like, it's fine. You know, come the race, I I would say 85% of the time I move forward in a race, 90% of the time I move forward in a race, but I'm qualifying. <laughs> I don't know what it is, man. Don't know what it is. <laughs> but yeah, same as you. I can put a lap together consistently for the whole race. Yeah. When, when you race karting, quick question, did you have Cadet 9, Cadet 12, all that, or was it? Yes, so we, we our first kart here you hop into is called a Cadet, but because of my age, I jumped into what's called a JR, which was a KT100, and it was basically, um, it was, we had, there's a class called Junior, um, and the JR just had a restricted muffler on to restrict the power, but it was a full-size go-kart, so yeah, that's what I started them. Well, okay, so that, that answers my question. So I, we had Cadet 12, which was the Cadet 9 car, which was a mini rock with the restrictor taken out. And mm -hmm. I used to be quick. Like, I say I had the fastest cut there on the weekend. I would qualify six and then I'd win the final. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. but I wouldn't, I'd move up through the race, the races, the heats. Like, the first seat, I'd probably finish third. And then the rest of it, I'd win. But, yeah, the qualifying would just never go my way. Yeah, I'm the same man. No matter what I try, I just, I just, I just couldn't do it. You know, as as strange. Or occasionally I'd be like, yeah, I'm pole, and then for half the session, all of a sudden, I keep drop. I just drop down because everyone's gone faster. But it, I've just learned to accept that. That's how I am. Um, I know that it is good to qualify a car because it helps you out in the race. And yeah. some of the best drivers are good qualifiers. Unfortunately for me, it hasn't happened that way. <laughs> My worst one was when I was at yeah. Todd Road. Uh, do you know that that's in Port Melbourne, and um, it was my first ever national round. I only ever did one round of nationals because that's all I could afford. Um, I qualified twenty six, and then in the race it was raining, and I went to fourth. Oh wow! How many laps was it? It was. Oh, they were long races. They were probably about ten ish laps. So, yep. but I just that's still I'm, mega effort. Yeah. Well, I'm. I base myself. I'm a good wet driver. I don't. Yeah, don't want to talk myself too much. But <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, even in the Formula V this year, I went from 18th to P9 in one lap in the wet. Wow, in the wet. Man, but, you want to come over to New Zealand? It always rains here. <laughs> well, <laughs> I would. I would say, oh, it's a bit lucky. But the thing was, like, the thing I can't really say it was lucky because I passed every single car. None of them came off. So yeah, hey, look, that's just that's just you yelling, I guess, with the car in those conditions, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, Dad used to always throw me out on slicks in the wet in go karting when we go testing. So if it rained, we'd we'd head to the local kart club after school, and I'd go do laps while it was raining on slicks. And wow, yeah, know, it crazy. just it just taught me how to be a good driver. Yeah, that's cool. It's, and same thing, man. Um, look, I don't mind the rain. Um, I my first ever race win was in the rain in a, in a Formula V. Which is quite strange, you know, like never driven in the rain, um, in a car, so I say. And then, yeah, same as carts, first time it rained, it went really well, a, a podium. So, but um, it's a bit different when you're going a little bit faster and cars start to aquaplane. I don't know if you had yeah. that before, it's a bit yeah. scary. <laughs> no, I, I know that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But let's move on. What do you do in between racing to sort of stay fit? What? How do you keep yourself fit? Uh, yeah, so... Being a racing car driver, like doing the sprint races is not too bad, but endurance stuff, obviously, that it is a different type of level of fitness. It's mental fitness and physical fitness. So I've been fortunate. I've been involved with martial arts since I was eight. So I haven't, I don't really have a specific motorsport fitness plan or um, training regime. I just do a lot of martial arts, um, judo, jiu jitsu. I've done MMA before. And that generally keeps me pretty fit, you know, go to the gym occasionally as well. So but yeah, definitely without doing the martial arts and going to the gym, uh, you definitely you definitely struggle if you're doing endurance stuff. You yeah, you got to do a bit of work to mm. be able to hop in that car for that amount of time. Yeah, you probably wouldn't be um, proud of me because I know 
in martial arts, it's considered quitting. But I did leave before I got my brown belt. Um, but I left to go to the gym. So I, I did karate. Well, no, so it's not, well, it is still an art, but I did karate mm, not. Um, up until before my grading for my brown belt. Um, because dad wanted me to learn some responsibility. So me and my brother did it. And then, um, yeah, I started doing gym as fitness. So okay, know, hey, look, I, you're still doing yeah. something. Um, it must be a dad thing. Cause that's what, that's why I started martial arts. He's like, I want you to do something, learn, learn how to defend yourself, you know? And then, yeah. then that turned into a career <laughs> of martial yeah. arts. Dad, yeah. Dad was very, um, persistent on me being able to defend myself and also being, um, disciplined. So that's why I did it. Um, Same as my dad. (laughs) Yeah. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I I always, I didn't mind karate, um, but it's definitely a very mental thing. Um, And that's a lot of, of I I agree, you know, like there's, you know, MMA is, uh, I would say a sport. Yes, it's a martial art, but it's a a sport. Um, I, my background, I started doing judo and, you know, that's very, respectful you know you bow to your opponent you bow on the mat you shake hands you 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 don't speak when the coach is speaking it definitely has relaxed as you know from when i started but um a bit of tradition and discipline never goes astray man it's you know helps some kids these days as well yeah um and i think martial arts is something everyone should have a go at um yeah yeah i i'm with you totally agree at least, at least just try try it man just you know everyone should have a go um, you, if you like or not, just give it a go. To say you step to step on the mat is you know accomplishment in itself, or to step in a ring is you know unless you have a, a, a boxing fight or a, or a cage <laughs> in mind my my, um, my turns. But yeah, if you can do any of those, then hey, I, I give it to you. That takes yeah. a lot of courage to do that. I never did any uh, tournaments. Did you? I've done many. Yeah, many, yeah. many. Yeah, I've represented New Zealand, which is quite cool. Um, oh wow! Doing judo, so I went to the World Cup. Um, unfortunately, I didn't meet him. I got beaten by a European champion, and he went on to podium and medal. But look, as an experience, just to be sleeping for to represent New Zealand and go overseas wearing the to silver fern, yeah. was pretty cool. So yeah, I'll hold that towards me, you know, my heart forever. So that's cool. To represent your country, that's a it's an awesome thing, which I'd love to do one day. Um, not sure if I can with motorsport that but that'd be the goal to race overseas and represent australia as a um, a driver um I, otherwise i don't think in any other sport i'd i'd be able to represent australia but oh, <laughs> yeah oh exactly man exactly like anyone that can go over and, and do the best they can for the country should be proud whether they podium or medal or, or win or not like just to be selected i think deserves a good pat on the back yeah and um you know as someone who comes from a motorsport background, what are your aspirations for the future, both personally um, and in the motorsport world? Hey, look, look, I really want to can just continue doing what I'm doing. You know, I um, I also instruct people how to race cars and high performance cars. I really enjoy that, giving back to the sport. Um, I know that myself, that my time as a, you know, if I wanted to be someone like as a world touring car driver or supercar driver, I'm too old, you know, and I started too late. And I think I'm a good driver. I don't think I'm the world's best. So I think where I'm at is where I want to continue staying, um, continue doing some endurance racing. I'm really enjoying that. I'd like to maybe get overseas, maybe to to Bathurst to do six hour, 12 hour, to go to maybe France Hatch. I already love that circuit. So do an endurance event there. That's kind of where I want to, want to be. Just continue doing what I'm doing and just hopefully keep involved with motorsport for, you know, until I, had enough really but i don't think i will i think i'll be in it for a long time yeah well the goal is to be like john bow just do it till i can't <laughs> yeah 100 percent. or kenny smith over here he's oh, 82 yeah. 83 and still bloody driving a race car actually there was someone at a sprint day the other day who was 87 years old he built his Ooh. own clubman car and he's uh he races around winton on a sprint day all right yeah, well, that would be cool. Goals, right? It'd be a granddad and still race and take your grandkids. That would be that would be a goal. <laughs> yeah. Um, but honestly, do you still do you still think it's realistic to do the twenty four hour Le Mans or the twenty four hour Nurburg in the future? Um, hey, look, never say never, man. But like, yeah. I just again, you know, I'm I'm, I'm thirty two now, so I'm again I'm pushing on, and it's there's a lot of good up and coming young race car drivers 
that you'll probably get the seat before me. <laughs> um, look, I'm happy just enjoying my motorsport, enjoying it. You know, I'm really enjoying it, the camaraderie that we have and with the team I race for, Race Lab. Um, and the team, they're, they're great to go away with and we just have such a good time and that's what it's about man, it's a motorsport community, spending time with your friends, you know, it's not just what you do on the track, it's going out for dinner, it's having a beer afterwards, it's having a chat in the transporter, you know, like it's, I'm sure you can understand, like it's just yeah. a cool time away with family, friends and just if I can keep doing this, I'd be more than happy. Yeah, that sounds like an awesome goal man and uh, I will ask you one, one more question. Um, would you like to thank any of your sponsors or supporters who have helped you along the way or even currently? Yeah, hey, look, I appreciate the opportunity, man, definitely. Well, first of all, I've got a shout out to Auto Nation New Zealand Clothing, which is actually, um, I've got shares in that company, so got to pump my own brand. Uh, Race Lab, Ambridge Rose, which is the um, the business of um, what my uh, the guy who owns a car, who, who owns, um, who else have we got? Kim's New Zealand. Um, and yeah, they're, they're the main ones that I'd definitely like to thank. And I've also got to thank my current workplace, um, Takane Sangyong, where I work uh, during my daytime to give me this time off to go to go race cars. So yeah, can't thank them enough. And obviously friends and family for all the support they've given me over the years. Yeah, appreciate it. I love being part of it. And I hope to continue doing what I love, doing my, my dream, you know? Yeah, that's awesome, man. And uh, yeah, definitely if you could have a worker who supports your racing, that's ideally what you want. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for joining me today, Matt. I really do appreciate it. And um, I guess if you're racing this weekend, everyone, just remember to drive fast and take chances safely, of course. That's Thanks exactly right, mate. Re- yeah, thank you. I really appreciate you jumping on. No problem, mate. You have a good one. Thank you. Thanks for your time.